గుడ్ విషెస్ టు ఆల్ ఆఫ్ యూ షార్ట్ సుసైన్స్ ఇండియా అండ్ ది కోన్ టెంపరీ వర్ల్డ్ టూ టెక్స్ట్ బుక్ ఇన్ హిస్టరీ ఫర్ క్లాస్ టెన్ నేషనలిజం ఇన్ ఇండియా టేక్ ఎ లుక్ ఎట్ ఫిగర్ వన్ సిక్స్త్ ఏప్రిల్ నైన్టీన్ నైన్టీన్ మాస్ ప్రొసెషన్ ఆన్ ది స్ట్రీట్స్ బికమ్ ఏ కామన్ ఫీచర్ జ్యూరింగ్ ది నేషనల్ మూమెంట్ యాజ్ యూ హ్యావ్ సీన్ మోడర్న్ నేషనలిజం ఇన్ యూరప్ కేమ్ టు బీ అసోసియేటెడ్ విత్ ది ఫార్మేషన్ ఆఫ్ నేషనల్ నేషన్ స్టేటస్ సారీ నేషన్ స్టేట్స్ it also meant a change in people's understanding of who they were and what defined their identity and sense of belonging new symbols and icons new songs and new for forget new links and uh, redefined the boundaries of communities in most countries the making of this new national identity was a long process how did this uh, consciousness emerge in india in india and uh, as in many other colonies the growth of modern nationalism is intimately connected to the anti colonial movement people began discovering their unity in the process of their struggle with colonial colonialism the sense of being oppressed under colonialism provided a shared bond that tied many different groups together but each class and group felt the effects of colonialism differently their experience were varied and their notions of freedom were not always the same the congress under mahatma gandhi tried to for- forge these groups together within one moment but the unity did not emerge without conflict in an early textbook you have read about the growth of nationalism in india up to the first decade of the 12th century in this chapter we will pick up the story from the 1920s and study the non cooperative and civil disobedience movements we will explore how the congress sought to develop the nation movement how different social groups participated in the movement and how nationalism captured the imagination of people one the first world war khilafat and non corporate non corporation new wars forced recruit, recruitment a process by which the colonial state forced people to join the army In the years after 1919 we see the national movement spreading to new areas incorporating new social groups and developing new mod- new modes of struggle how do we understand these developments what implications did they have take a look at figure 2 indian workers in south africa marched through walkers 6th november 1913 mahatma gandhi was leading the workers from new castle to transvaal when the mar- marchers were stopped and gandhi ji arrested thousands of mo- more workers joined uh, joined the satyagraha against uh, racist laws that uh, denied rights to non whites find of all the war created a new economic and uh, political situation it led to a huge increase in defense uh, expen- expenditure which was financed by war loans and increasing taxes custom duties were raised and income tax introduced through the war years prices increased doubling between 1913 and 1918 leading to extreme hardship for the common people villages were called upon to supply soldiers and the forced recruitment in rural areas caused widespread anger then in 1918 to 19 and 1920 to 21 crops failed in many parts of india resulting in ex- acute shortage of food this was accompanied by an influenza epidemic according to the census of 1921 12 to 13 million people persisted as a result of famines and the epidemic people hoped that their hardships would end after the war was over but that did not happen at this stage a new leader appeared and struck, suggested a new mode of struggle the idea of satyagraha mahatma gandhi returned to india in january 1915 as you know he had come from south africa where he had successfully fought the racist rigam in with a novel method of mass agitation which he called satyagraha the idea of satyagraha emphasizes the power of truth and the need to search of search for truth it suggested that if the cause was true if the struggle was against injustice 
then physical force was not necessary to fight the oppressor without seeking vengeance or being aggressive a satyagraha could be the battle through non violence this could be done by appealing to the conscience of the oppressor people including the oppressors had to be persuaded to see the truth instead of being forced to accept truth through the use of violence by this struggle truth was bound to unlimitedly sorry ultimately trump mahatma gandhi believed that this uh, dharmas of non violence could anti- unite all indians source here, mahatma gandhi on satyagraha it is said of passive resistance that it, it is the weapon of the weak but the power which is the subject of the at- article can be used only by the strong this power is not passive resistance indeed it calls for intense activity the movement in south africa was not passive but active satyagraha is not physical force a satyagraha satyagrahi does not inflict pain on the adversary he does not seek his uh, destruction in the use of satyagraha there is no ill will whatever satyagraha is pure soul force truth is the very substance of the soul that is why this force is called satyagraha the soul is informed with knowledge uh, in it burns the flame of love non violence is the supreme dharma it is a time that india cannot uh, rival britain to britain or uh, europe in force of arms the british worship the war god and they can all of them become as they are becoming barriers of arms the hundreds of millions in india can never carry arms they have made the religion of non violence their own After arriving in India Mahatma Gandhi successfully organized satyagraha movements in various places in 1917 he traveled to Kamparan in Bihar to inspire the peasants to struggle against the oppressive plantation plantation system then in 1917 he organized a satyagraha to support the peasants of the Kheda district of Gujarat affected by crop failure and a plague epi- epidemic the peasants of kedha could not pay the revenue and were demanding that revenue collection be relaxed in 1918 mahatma gandhi went to ahmedabad to organize a satyagraha movement among us cotton mill workers activity read the text carefully what did mahatma gandhi mean when he said satyagraha is active resistance the rover act emboldened with this is success gandhi in 1919 decided to launch a national wide satyagraha against the proposed rovers act 1919 this act had been hurriedly passed through the imperial legislative council despite the united opposition of the indian members it gave the government enormous powers to repress political activities and allowed den- detention of political prisoners without trial for 2 years Mahatma Gandhi wanted non-violent civil disobedience against such unjust law which would start with a hatred on 6 April rallies were organized in various cities workers went on strike in railway workshops and uh, shops closed down alarmed by the popular upsurge and uh, scared that li- lines of communication such as the railways and telegraph would be disrupted The British administration decided to clamp down on nationalists. Local leaders were picked up from Amritsar and Mahatma Gandhi was barred from entering Delhi. On 10th April, the police in Amritsar fired upon a peaceful procession provoking widespread attacks on banks, post offices and railway stations. Martial law was imposed and general dire took command. On 13th April in famous uh, Jallianwal Bagh incident took place on the day a large crowd gathered in the enclosed ground of Jallianwal Bagh some came to protest against the government's new repressive measure others had come to attend the annual Baisakhi fair being from outside the city many villagers were unaware of the martial law that had been imposed They entered the area, blocked the exit points, and opened fire on the crowd, killing hundreds. His object, as he declared later, was to produce a mortal effect, a create in the to create in the minds of satyagraha 
satyagrahas uh, a feeling of terror and heavy take a look at figure 3 general dyer's crown orders being administered by british soldiers amritsar punjab 1919 as the news uh, news of jawlan bag spread crowd to to the streets in many northern indian towns there were strikes clashes with the police and attacks on government buildings the government responded with brutal repression seeking to humiliate and terrorize people satyagraha were forced to rub their noses on the ground crawl on the street and uh, do salam salute to all sahibs people were flogged and villages around uh, gurjanwala in punjab now in pakistan were bombed saying violence spread mahatma gandhi called off the movement while the rollet uh, satyagraha had been a widespread movement it was still limited mostly to cities and towns mahatma gandhi now felt the need to launch a more broad based movement in india but he was at time that no such movement could be organized without bringing the hindu hindus and muslims closer together one way of doing this he felt was to take up take up the khilafat issue the first world war had ended with the defeat of ottoman turkey and there were rumors that a harsh peace treaty was going to be imposed on the ottoman emperor the spiritual head of the islamic world the khalifa to defend the khalifa's uh, temporal powers a khalifat committee was formed in bombay in march 1919 A young generation of Muslim leaders like the brothers Muhammad Ali and Shaukat Ali began discussing with Mahatma Gandhi about the possibility of a united mass action on the issue. Gandhi ji saw this as an opportunity to bring opportunity to bring Muslim under the umbrella of a unified nation movement at the Calcutta session of the congress in september 1920 he convinced other leaders of the need to start a non cooperative movement in support of um, caliphate as well as, as well as for swaraj why non cooperation in this famous book hind swaraj 1909 mahatma gandhi declared that uh, british rule was established in india with the cooperation of indians and had survived only because of this cooperation if indians refused to cooperate british rule in india would collapse with the within a year and swaraj would come how could non cooperation become a movement gandhi ji proposed that the movement should unfold in stages it should begin with the surrender of titles that the government award, awarded and a boycott of civil services army police courts and legislative councils schools and uh, foreign goods then in case the government used repression a full civil disobedience campaign will, would be launched through the summer of 1920 mahatma gandhi and uh, shakat ali toured extensively mobilizing popular support for the movement new words boycott the refusal to deal and associate with the people or participating in activities or buy and use things usually a form of protest take a look at figure 4 the boycott of foreign cloth july 1922 foreign cloth was seen as the symbol of western economic and cultural domination many within within the congress were however concerned concerned about the proposals they were uh, reluctant to boycott the council election scheduled for november 1920 and they feared that the movement might lead to popular violence in the months between september and december there was an intense uh, tussle within the congress for a while there seemed no meeting point between the supporters and the opponents of the movement finally at the congress sections at uh, nagpur in december 1920 a compro compromise was worked out the worked and the non cooperation program was adopted how did the movement unfold who participated in it how did different social groups conceive of the idea of non cooperation two differing strands within the movement the non cooperation khilafat movement began in january 1921 various social groups participated in this movement each with its 
own specific aspiration all of them responded to the call of swaraj but the term meant different things to different people new words picket a form of demonstration or protest by which people block the entrances to a shop factory of or office activity the year is 1921 you are a student in a government controlled school design a poster arguing school student to answer gandhi ji's call to join the non cooperative movement the movement in the towns the movement started with a middle class participation in the cities thousands of students left government controlled schools and colleges headmasters and teachers resigned and lawyers gave up their legal practices the council elections were boycotted in most provinces except uh, madras where the justice party the party of the non brahmanas felt that engin- entering the council was one way of gaining some power something that usually only brahmanas had access to the effects of non cooperation on the economic front were more dramatic foreign goods were boycotted liquor shops picketed picketed and foreign cloth burnt in a huge bonfires the import of foreign cloth halved between 1921 and 1922 its value dropping from rs 102 crore to rs 57 crore in many places merchants and traders refused to trade in foreign goods or finance foreign trade as the boycott movement spread and people began discarding important clothes and wearing only indian ones production of indian textile mills and handlooms went up but this movement in the cities gradually slowed down for the variety of reasons khadi cloth was often more expensive than mass produced milk cloth and poor people could not afford to buy it how then could they boycott milk cloth for too long similarly the boycott of british instructions posed a problem for the movement to be successful alternative india indian institution had to be set up so that they could be used in place of the british ones these were slow to come up so students and teachers began trickling back to government schools and lawyers joined back work in government courts rebellion in the countryside from the cities the non cooperative movement spread to the countryside it drew into its fold the struggle of peasants and tribals which uh, were developing in different parts of india in the years after the war new words beggar labor the villagers were forced to contribute without any payment activity If you were a peasant in Uttar Pradesh in 1920 how would you have responded to Gandhi ji's call for swaraj give reasons for your response in 1928 vallabhai patel led the peasant movement in bardoli a taluka in gujarat the against an enhancement of land revenue known as the bardoli satyagraha this movement was a success under the able leadership of vallabhai patel The struggle was widely published and generated immense uh, sympathy in many parts of India. In our peasants were led by Baba Ramchandra, a sannyasi who had cleared been to Fiji as an uh, indentured laborer. The movement here was against uh, talukdars and uh, landlords who demanded from peasants ex- exorbitantly high rents and a variety of other excesses. peasants have to do bigger and work at landlords farms without any payment at tens and and uh, tenants they had no security of or tenure being regular evicted so that they could uh, acquire no right over the leaser land the peasant movement demanded a reduction of revenue abolition of beggar and a social boycott of uh, oppressive landlords in many places nay dhobi bands were organized by panchayats to deprive landlords of the services of even barbers and washermen in june 1920 jawaharlal nehru began going around the villages in avad talking to the villagers and trying to understand their grievances by october the old kisan sabha was set up headed by jawaharlal nehru Baba Ramachandra and a few others within a month over 300 branches had been set up in the villages around the region so when the non cooperation movement began the following year the effort of the congress was to integrate the avad peasant struggle into the wider struggle the peasant movement however developed in forms that uh, the congress leadership uh, 
was unhappy with. As the movement spread in 1921, the house of um, talukdars and merchants were attracted, bazaars were looted, and grain hordes were taken over. In many places, local leaders told peasants that Gandhiji had declared that uh, no taxes were to be paid and land was to be distributed among the poor. The name of the Mahatma was being invoked to sanction all action and aspirations. Source B. On 6 January 1921, the police in United Provinces fired at peasants near Rai, Bare, Rai Bareli. Jawaharlal Nehru wanted to go to the place of offering but was stopped by the police. Agitated and ag- angry, Nehru addressed the peasant who gathered around him. This is how he later described the meeting. They behaved as a brave man, calm and um, unruffled in the face of danger. I do not know how they felt, but I know what my feelings were. For a moment, my blood was up, non-violence was almost forgotten, but for a moment only. The thought of the great leader, who by God's godness, goodness has been sent to lead us to victory, came to me, and I saw the, I saw the Kisan seated and standing near me, less excited, more peaceful than I was, and the moment of weakness passed, I spoke to them, in all humanity on non-violence. I needed the lesson more than they, and they heeded me or me and uh, peacefully despaired. Quoted in Sarvepal, Sarvepalli Gopal, Jawaharlal Nehru, a biography, volume 1. Tribal peasants uh, interrupted the message of Mahatma Gandhi and the idea of Swaraj in yet another way. In the Gudem hills of Andhra Pradesh, uh, for instance, a Militant guerrilla movement spread in the early 1920s, not a form of struggle that the Congress could approve. Here, as in other forest regions, the colonial government has closed large forest areas, preventing people from entering the forest to graze their cattle or to collect fuel, fuel wood and fruits this uh, and ragged um, the hill, uh, hill people. Not only were their livelihoods affected by the, but they felt that their traditional rights were being denied. When the government began forcing them to contribute bigger for road building, the hill people revolted. The person who came to lead them was an interesting figure. Alluri Sitaramaraju claimed that he had a variety of special powers. He could make correct astrological predictions and heal people, and he could survive even bullet shots. Captivated by Raju, the rebels proclaimed that he was an incarnation of God. Raju talked of the greatness of Mahatma Gandhi, said he was inspired by the non-cooperation movement, and persuaded people to wear khadi and give up drinking. But at the same time, he asserted that Indian could be liberated only by by the use of force, not, not non-violence. The Ghudam rebels attacked police station, attempted to kill British officials, and carried on guerrilla warfare for uh, achieving Swaraj. Raju was captured and uh, executed in uh, 1924 and over time became a folk hero. Swaraj in the plantations. Workers too had uh, their own understanding of Mahatma Gandhi and the notion of Swaraj for ex- uh, plantation workers in Assam. Freedom meant the right to move freely in and uh, out of the confined space in with, uh, which, they was, which they were enclosed. And it meant retaining a link with the village from which they have be- had come. Under the Inland Immigration Act of 1859, plantation workers were not permitted to leave the tea gardens without permission. And in fact, they were rarely given such permissions. When they heard of the non-cooperation movement, thousands of workers uh, defied the authorities, left the plantations and headed home. They believed that Gandhi's, Gandhi Raj was uh, coming and uh, everyone would be given land in their own villages. They, however, near reached their destination, stranded on the way by a railway and um, steamer strike. They were caught by the police and uh, brutally beaten up. Activity Find out about the participants in the national movement who were captured and put to death by the British. Can you think of a similar example from the national movement in uh, Indochina? Chapter 2 The vision of these movements were not defined by the Congress program. 
they interpreted the term swaraj in their own ways imagining it to be a time when all suffering and uh, all troubles would be over it when the tribals chanted gandhi ji's name and raised their slogans demanding swatantra bharat they were also emotionally related to uh, an uh, all india agitation when they acted in the name of uh, mahatma gandhi or linked their movement to the top the congress they were identifying with a movement which went by beyond the limits of their immediately locality take a look at figure 5 chauri chaura 1922 at chauri chaura in gorakhpur a peaceful demonstration in a bazaar turned into a violent clash with the polish hearing of the incident mahatma gandhi called a halt to the non cooperation movement towards civil disobedience lala lajpat rai was assaulted by the assaulted by the british police during a peaceful demonstration against the simon commission simon commission he is compared to injuries that were inflicted on him during the demonstration take a look at figure 6 meeting of congress leaders at alhabad 1931 Apart from Mahatma Gandhi you can see Sardar Vallabhbhai Patel extreme left Jawaharlal Nehru extreme right and uh, Subhash Chandra Bose fifth from right in February 1922 Mahatma Gandhi decided to withdraw the non cooperative movement uh, he felt the movement was turning violent in many places and uh, satyagrahas needed to be properly trained before they would be ready for mass struggles within the congress some leaders were no, were by now tired of mass struggles and wanted to participate in elections to the provincial councils that had been set uh, set up by the government of india act of 1919 they felt that it was important to oppose the british policies within the councils argue for reform and also demonstrate that these councils were not truly democratic c r das and uh, motilal nehru formed the swaraj party within the congress to argue for him returned to council politics but uh, younger leaders like jawaharlal nehru and subhash chandra bose preferred for more ra- radical mass agitation and for full independence in such a situation of internal debate and uh, dissent on two factors again shaped india politics uh, towards the late 1920s the first was the effect of the worldwide economic depression agriculture prices began to fall from 1926 and collapsed after 1930 as the demand for agriculture goods fell and exports declined peasants found it difficult to see their harvest and pay their revenue by 1930 the countryside was in turmoil against this background the new tory government in britain constituted a statutory commission under Sir John Simon set up in response to the nationalist uh, movement the commission was was to look into the functioning of the constitutional system in India and suggest changes the problem was that the commission did not have a single indian member they were all british when the simon commission arrived in india in 1928 it was uh, greeted with the slogan go back simon all parties including the congress and the Muslim League participated in the demonstration in an effort to win them o- over the victory. Lord Irwin announced in October 1929 a vacuum offered of uh, dominant status for India in an uh, unspecified future and a round table conference discussed a future constitution. This did not satisfy the Congress leaders the radicals within the Congress led by Jawaharlal Nehru and Subhash Chandra Bose become more assertive the liberals and uh, moderates uh, who were proposing a constitutional system within the framework of british dom- domination gradually lost their influence in uh, december 1929 under the presidency of jawaharlal nehru the lahore congress formalized the demand of purna swaraj or full independence uh, for india it was declared that 26 january 1930 would be celebrated as the independence day when people were to take a pledge to struggle for complete independence but the celebration attractive uh, attracted very little attention so mahatma gandhi had to find a way to relate this uh, abstract idea of freedom to more uh, concrete issue of every day life 
Sorsi, the Independence Day Pledge, 26 January 1933. We believe that it is the inalienable right of the Indian people, as of any other people, to have freedom and to enjoy the fruits of their toil and um, have the necessities of life, so that they may have full opportunities of growth. We believe also that if any government deprives the people of these rights and oppresses them, the people have a future right to alter it or to ab abolish it. The British government in India has not only deprived the Indian people of their freedom but has based itself on the exploitation of the masses and has ruined India economically, politically, culturally and spiritually. We believe therefore that India must sever the British connection and attain Purna Swaras or complete independence. The Salt March and the Civil Disobedience Movement Mahatma Gandhi found in salt a powerful symbol that could uh, unite the nation. On 31 January 1930, he sent a letter to Viceroy, Viceroy Irwin stating uh, 11 demands. Some of these were of uh, general interest, others were specific demands of different classes from industrials to, to peasants. The idea was to make the demand wide ranging so that all classes within India society could identify with them and everyone could be brought together in a united campaign. The most stirring of all was the demand to abolish the salt tax. Salt was something consumed by the rich and the poor like and it was one of the most essential items of food. The tax on salt and the government uh, monopoly over its production. Mahatma Gandhi declared revealed the most oppressive face of uh, British rule. Mahatma Gandhi's letter was in a way an ultimatum if the demands were not fulfilled by 11th March. The letter stated uh, the Congress would launch a civil disobedience campaign. Irwin was unwilling to negotiate. So Mahatma Gandhi started his famous salt march accompanied by 78 of his trusted volunteers. The march was over 240 miles from Gandhiji's ashrama in Sabarmati to the Gujarat coastal town of Dadi. The volunteers walked for 24 days about 10 miles a day. Thousands came to hear Mahatma Gandhi wherever he stopped and he told them what he meant by Swaraj and argued them to peacefully defy the British. On 6th April, he reached Dundee and ceremonially violated the law, manufacturing salt by boiling seawater. This marked the beginning of the civil disobedience movement. How was this movement different uh, from the non-cooperation movement? People were now asked not only to refuse operation with the British. Sorry. Asked not only to refuse cooperation with the British as they had done in 1921-22 but also to break colonial laws. Thousands in different parts of the country broke the salt law, manufactured salt and demonstrated in front of government salt factories. As the movement spread, foreign cloth was boycotted and liquor shops were picket picketed. Peasants refused to pay revenue and chowkidari taxes. Village officials resigned and in many places forest people violated forest laws going into reserved forest to collect wood and graze, little, graze cattle. Take a look at figure 7, the Dandi march during the salt march Mahatma. Mahatma Gandhi was accompanied by 78 volunteers on the way they were joined by thousands. Take a look at figure 8, police cracked down on Satyagrahis. 1930. Worried by the developments, the colonial government began arresting the Congress leaders one by one. This led to violent clashes in many places, many palaces. When Abdul Ghaffar Khan, a devout uh, disciple of Mahatma Gandhi, was arrested in April 1930, angry crowds demonstrated in the streets of Peshwar, facing armored cars and police firing. Many were killed. A month later, when Mahatma Gandhi himself was arrested, industrial workers in Solapur attracted police posts, municipal buildings, law courts, and railway stations, all structures that symbolized British rule. 
a frightened government respond with a policy of brutal repression peaceful satyagrahis were attacked women and children were beaten and about term um, 1 lakh people were arrested in such a situation mahatma gandhi once again decided to call off the movement and entered uh, into a pact with irwin on 5th march 1931 by this gandhi irwin pact uh, gandhi ji consented to participate in him round table conference the congress had boycotted the first round table conference in london and the government agreed to release the political prisoners in december 1931 gandhi ji went to london for the conference but the negotiations broke down and uh, he turned disappointed back in india he discovered that the government had begun a new cycle of repression Gafar Khan and Jawaharlal Nehru were both in jail the congress had been declared illegal and a series of measures had been imposed to prevent meetings demonstrations and boycotts with great uh, apprehensions mahatma gandhi relaunched the civil disobedience movement for over a year the movement continued but by 1934 it lost its moment momentum box 1 to the altar of this revolution we have brought our youth as uh, incense many nationalists thought that the struggle against the british could not be won through non violence in 1928 the hindustan socialist republic army hsra was uh, founded at a meeting in ferosha kochia ground in delhi among its leaders were bhagat singh jatindas and azoy ghosh in a series of dramatic actions in different parts of india the hsra targeted some hsra targeted some of the symbols of british power in april 1929 bhagat singh and um, patkeshwar tatha threw a bomb in the legislative assembly in the same year there was an attempt to blow up the train that lord irwin was traveling in bhagat singh was 23 when he was tried to try tried and executed by the colonial government during his trial bhagat singh stated uh, that he did not wish to glorify the cult uh, of the bomb and uh, pistol but wanted a revolution in society <laughs> revolution is the inalienable right of mankind freedom is the impress imprescriptible bright right of all the laborer is the real sustainer of society to the altar of this revolution we have brought our youth as incense for no sacrifice is too great for great for so magnificent uh, a cause we are content um, we await the advent of revolution in kuala zindabad how participants saw the moment let us n- now look at the different social groups that participated in the civil disobedience movement um, why did they join the movement what were their ideals what did swaraj mean to them in the countryside rich peasant communities like the patriots of uh, gujarat and the jats of uh, uttar pradesh were active in the movement being producers of commercial crops they were very hard hit by the trade depression and falling prices as their cash income disappeared they found it uh, impossible to pay the government's uh, revenue demand and the refusal of the government to reduce the revenue demanded led to widespread uh, resentment these rich peasants become enthusiastic supporters of the civil disobedience movement organizing their communities and at first and at times um, forcing reluctant members to participate in the boycott uh, programmers for them the fight for swaraj was a struggle against uh, high revenues but they were deeply disappointed when the movement was called off in 1931 without the revenue rates being revised so when the movement was resta- restarted in 1932 many of them refused to participate the poorer peasantry were not just interested in the lowering of the revenue demand many of them were small tenants cultivating land they had rented from landlords as the depression continued and cash incomes dwindled the small tenants found it difficult to pay their rent they wanted to apply the rent to the landlord to be remitted they joined a variety of uh, radical movements uh, often led by socialists and communists apprehensive of rising issues uh, that might upset the rich peasants and landlords 
the congress was unwilling to support no rent campaigns in most places so the relationship between the poor peasants and the congress remained uncertain what about the business classes how did they related to the civil disobedience movement during the first world war india merchants and industrialists had made huge profits and become powerful see chapter 5 keen on expanding their business they now reacted against colonial politics that restricted business activities they wanted protection against imports of foreign goods and him rupee sterling foreign exchange ratio that would discourage imports to original to organize business interest they formed the indian industrial and commercial congress in 1920 and the federation of the india chamber of commerce and industries FICCI in 1927 led by prominent industrial industrialists like um, Pushwadma Sir Takrudras and uh, GD Birla the industrialists uh, attacked colonial control over the indian economy and supported the civil disobedience movement when it was first launched they gave financial assistance and refused to buy or sell imported goods most businessmen came to see swaraj as a time when colonial restriction on business would no longer exist and the trade and industry would flourish without constraints but after the failure of the round table conference business groups were no longer uncomfortable uniformly enthusiastic enthusiastic they were apprehensive of the spread of militant activities and worried about prolonged disruption of business as well as of the growing influence of socialism among its the younger members of the congress the industrial working classes did not participate in the civil disobedience movement in large numbers expecting expect in the nagpur region as the industrial industrialists came closer to the congress workers stayed aloof but in spite of that some workers did participate in the civil disobedience movement selectively adopting some of the ideas of the gandhian program like boycott of foreign goods as part of their own movements against low wages and poor working conditions there were strikes by railway workers in 1930 and dock workers in 1932 in 1930 thousands of workers in chota nagpur tin mines were gandhi caps and participated in protest ra- rallies and boycott campaigns but the congress was uh, reluctant to include workers demands as part of its uh, program of struggle it felt uh, that this would alienate uh, industry industrialists and divide the anti imperial forces another imp- important feature of the civil disobedience movement was the large scale participation of women during gandhi ji's sarg march thousands of women came out of their homes to listen to him they participated in protest marches um, manufactured salt and uh, picketed foreign cloth and liquor shops some important dates 1918 to 19 distressed up peasants organized by baba ramachandra april 1919 gandhian hotel against uh, rovalt act jallianwala bhag uh, masker January 1921 non cooperation and um, caliphate movement uh, launched February 1922 Chauri Chaura Gandhi ji withdraws non cooperation movement May 1924 Alluri Sitaram Raju arrested ending to ending a two year uh, armed tribal struggle December 1929 Lahore Congress Congress adopts the demand for Purna Swaraj 1930 Ambedkar establishes the present and classes association March 1930 Gandhi ji begins civil disobedience movement by breaking salt law at Dandi March 1931 Gandhi ji ends civil disobedience movement December 1931 second round table conference 1932 civil disobedience relaunched Take a look at figure 9 women join nationalist processions during the national movement many women for the first time in their lives moved out of their homes onto a public areas arena 
Among us, the marchers, you can see many old women and mothers with children in their arms. Discuss. Why did various classes and groups of Indians participated in the civil disobedience movement? Many went to jail in urban areas. These women were from high caste families in rural areas. They came from rich peasant households. Moved by Gandhiji's call, they began to see service to the nation as a sacred duty of women. At this, increased public role did not necessarily mean any radical change in the way the position of women was visualized. Gandhiji was convinced that it was the duty of women to look after home and health. Be good mothers and good wives and for a long time the Congress was uh, reluctant to allow women to hold any position of authority within the organization. It was keen only on their symbolic presence, the limits of civil disobedience. Not all social groups were moved by the abstract concept of Swaraj. One such uh, group was the nation's untouchables who from around the 1930s had begun to call themselves uh, Dalit or uh, oppressor. For long, the Congress had ignored the Dalits for fear of offending the Sanatins, the conservative high caste Hindus. But Mahatma Gandhi declared that Swaraj would not come for a hundred years if untouchability was not eliminated. He called the untouchables uh, Harizan or the children of God. Organized Satyagraha to secure them entry into temples and access to public wells. Uh, Tanks, roads, and schools, he himself uh, cleaned toilets to dignify the work of the bungi, the sweepers, and uh, persuaded upper caste to change their heart and give up the sin of untouchability. But many Dalit leaders were keen on a different political solutions on the problems of the community. They began organizing themselves, demanding reserve seats in uh, educational instruction and a separate uh, electorate. Uh, electorate that would choose Dalit members for legislative councils. Political empowerment they believed uh, would resolve the problem of their social disabilities. Dalit participated in the civil disobedience movement was therefore limited, particularly in the Maharashtra and Nagpur region where their organization was quite strong. Dr. B. R. Ambedkar who organized the Dalits into the Depressed Classes Association in 1930 clashed with Mahatma Gandhi at the second round table conference by demanding separate electorates for Dalits. When the British government con considered Ambedkar's demand, Gandhiji began a fast undo death. He believed that separate electorates for Dalits would slow down the process of their integration into society. Ambedkar ultimately accepted Gandhiji's position and the result was the Pune Pact of uh, September 1932. It gave the depressed classes later to be known as the Scheduled Castes, reserved seats in provincial and central legislative council, but they were to be voted in the in by the general electorate. The Dalit movement, however, continued to be apprehensive of the Congress uh, Congress-led national movement. Some of the Muslim political organizations in India were also lukewarm in their response to the civil disobedience movement after the decline of the non-cooperation caliphate uh, movement. A large section of Muslims felt uh, alienated from the Congress from the mid-1920s. The Congress came to be more visibly associated with openly Hindu religious uh, nationalist groups like the Hindu Mahasabha. As relations between Hindus and Muslims uh, worsened, each community organized religious presences with uh, Maltained uh, fervor provoking Hindu Muslim communal clashes and rights in various cities. Every riot de defended the distance between the two communities. Take a look at figure 10. Mahatma Gandhi, Jawaharlal Nehru, and uh, Maulana Azad at uh, Sevagram Ashram, Varda, 1935. The Congress and the Muslim League made efforts to renegotiate an alliance, and in 1927 it appeared that such a Unity could be forgot, forged. The important differences were over the questions of response representation in the future assemblies that were to be elected. Muhammad Ali Jinnah, one of the leaders of the Muslim League, was willing to give up the demand for separate uh, electronics. If Muslims were assured reserved seats in the central assembly and representation in proportion 
to population in the Muslim dominated provinces Bengal and Punjab Negotiations over the questions of representation continued but all hope of resolving the issue at the All Parties Conference in 1928 disappeared when M R Jaikar of the Hindu Mahasabha strongly opposed efforts at a compromise when the civil disobedience movement started there was the there was this and atmosphere of a suspicious and suspicion and a disturb between communities alienated from the congress large sections of muslims could not respond to the call for a united struggle many muslim leaders and intellectuals expressed their concern about the status of muslims as a minority within india they feared that the culture and identity of minorities would be submerged under the domination of a hindu majority source d in 1930 sir mohammad iqbal as president of the muslim league retired the importance of a separate electorates offer the muslim as an important safeguard for their minority political interests his statement is supposed to have provided the intellectual justification for the pakistan demand that came up in subsequent years this is what he said i have no hesitation in declaring that if the principle that the indian muslim is entitled to full and free development on the lines of his own culture and tradition in his own india indian home homeland is recognized as the basics of a permanent communal settlement he will be ready to stake uh, his all for the freedom of india the principle that each group is entitled to free development on its uh, own lines is not inspired by any feeling of narrow communalism a community which is inspired by feelings of ill will towards other communities is low and ignoble i entertain the highest respect for the customs laws religions and social instructions of other communities nay it is my duty according to the teachings of the quran even to even to defend their place of worship, places of worship if need by it i love the communal group which is the source of life and behavior and which has formed me what i am by giving me its religion its literature its thought its culture and thereby is whole past as a living operative factor in my present consciousness communalism in its high higher aspect than indispensable to the formation of a harmonious whole in a country like india the units of india society are not territorially as in european countries the principle of european democracy cannot be applied to india without recognizing the fact of communal groups the muslim demand for the creation of a muslim india within india is therefore perfectly justified the hindu thinks that separate electorates are contrary to the spirit of true nationalism because he understand the word nation to mean a kind of universal amalgamation in which no communal entity or to retain its private individuality such a state of all things however does not exist india is a land of racial and religious variety add to this the general economic inferiority of the muslims their enormous debt especially in the punjab and their insufficient majorities in some of the provinces as at present constituted and you will begin to see clearly the meaning of our anxiety to retain separate electorates discuss read the source d carefully do you agree with the iqbal ideas of communism can you define communism in a different way for the sense of collective belonging take a look at figure 11 bal ganga dar tilak an early 20th century printer notice how tilaks is surrounded by symbols of unity the sacred institutions of different faiths temple church masjid frame the central figure nationalism spreads when people begin to believe that they are all of part of the same nation when they discover some unity that binds them together but how did the nation become a real reality in the minds of people how did people belonging to different communities regions or languages groups develop a sense of collective belonging the sense of collective belonging came partly through the experience of united struggles but there were also a variety of cultural processes 
through which nationalism captured people's imagination history and fiction folklore and songs popular prints and symbols all played a part in the making of nationalism take a look at figure 12 bharat mata a bandrana tagore 1905 notice that the mother figure there here is shown as um, dispensing learning food and clothing the mala in one hand emphasizes her uh, ascetic quality abhindranath tagore like uh, ravi varma before him tried to develop a style of painting that could be seen as a truly indian take a look at figure 13 jawaharlal nehru a popular print nehru is here shown holding the image of bharat mata and the map of india close to his heart in a lot of popular prints nationalism leaders are shown offering their heads to bharat mata the idea of sacrifice for the mother was powerful within popular imagination the identity of the identify sorry the identity of the nation as you know the chapter 1 is most often symbolized in a figure or image this helps create an image which with which people can identify the nation it was in the 12th century with the growth of nationalism that the identity of india came to be visually associated with the image of bharata mata the image was first created bankim chandra bakim chandra chatopadhyay in the 1870s he wrote vande mataram as ham to be motherland later it was included in his novel anand mat and widely sang during the swadeshi movement in bengal moved by this swadeshi movement abhinandan tagore pre- painted his famous image of bharata mata say figure 12 in this painting bharata mata is portrayed as an as an ascetic figure she is calm composed divine and spiritual in subsequent years the image of bharata mata acquired many different forms as it uh, circulated in popular prints and was painted by different artists see figure 14 devotion to this mother figure came to be seen as evidence of one's nationalism ideas of nationalism also developed through a movement to revive indian folklore in late 19th century india nationalists began recording folk tales sung by bards and they tortured they toured villages to gather folk songs and legends these tales they believed gave a true picture of traditional culture that had been corrupted and damaged by outside forces it was essential to preserve this folk tradition in order to discover one's national identity and restore a sense of pride in one's past in bengal rabindranath tagore himself began collecting balads nursery rhymes and myths and led the movement for folk revival in madras natesha sastri natesha sastri published a massive four volume collection of tamil folk tales the folklore of southern india he believed that folk folklore was national literature it was the most true trustworthy manifestation of people's real thoughts and characteristics take a look at figure 14 a bharata mata This figure of Bharata Mata is a contrast to the one painted by Abhinandan Tagore. Here she is so with a Trishul standing beside a lion and an elephant both symbols of power and authority. Activity look at figure 12 and 14 do you think these images will appeal to all castes and communities explain your views briefly. as the national movement developed nationalism leaders became more and more aware of such uh, icons and symbols in unifying people and inspiration inspiring inspiring in them a feeling of nationalism during the swadeshi movement in bengal a tricolor flag red green and yellow was designed it had eight lotus representing eight provinces of british india and a crescent moon represent, representing hindus and muslims by 1921 gandhi ji had designed this swaraj flag it was again a tricolor red green and white and had a spinning wheel in the center representing the gandhian idea of self help carrying the flag holding it aloft during marches became a symbol of 
defense. Another means of creating a feeling of nationalism was through reinterpretation of history. By the end of the 19th century, many Indians began feeling that to instill a sense of pride in the nation. India, Indian history had to be thought about differently. The British saw Indians as backward and primitive, incapable of governing themselves. In response, Indians began looking into the past to discover India's great achievements. They wrote about the glorious developments in ancient times when art and architecture, architecture, science and mathematics, religion and culture, law and philosophy, crafts and trade has flourished. This glorious time in their view was followed by a history of decline when India was colonized. These nationalist histories argued the readers to take pride in India's great achievements in the past and struggle to change the miserable conditions of conditions of life under British rule. These efforts to unify people were not without problems. When the past being glorified was Hindu, when the images celebrated were drawn from Hindu iconography, then people of other communities felt uh, left out. So see, in earlier times, foreign travelers in India marveled at the courage, truthfulness and modesty of the people of the Arya Vamsa. Now, they remark mainly on the absence of those qualities. In those days, Hindus would set out on conquest and host their flags in Tartar, China and other countries. Now, a few soldiers from him, tiny island far, far away are lorting it over the land of India. Tarincharan Chathopadhyaya Bharat Barshir Itihas, the history of uh, Bharat Barsh, Volume 1, 1858. Conclusion A growing anger against the colonial government was thus bringing together various groups and classes of Indians into a common struggle for freedom. In the first half of the 12th century, the Congress, under the leadership of Mahatma Gandhi, tried to channel people's uh, grievances into organized movements for independence. Through such movements, the nationalists tried to for for the national unity, but as we have seen, diverse groups and classes participated in these movements with them. varied aspirations and expectations as their grievances were wide-ranging. Freedom from colonial rule also meant different things to different people. The Congress continuously attempted to resolve differences and ensure that the demands of one group did not alienate another. This is precisely why the unity within the movement often broke down. The high points of Congress activity and nationalist unity were followed by phases of disunity and inner conflict between groups. In other words, what was emerging was a nation with many voices wanted, wanting a freedom from colonial rule. Take a look at 14b, women's positions in Bombay during the Quit India movement. Quit India movement. The failure of the Crips mission and the effects of World War II created widespread uh, discontent in India. This led Gandhiji to launch a movement calling for complete withdrawal of the British from India. The Congress Working Committee, in, it, in its meeting in Vardhan on 14 July 1942, passed the historic uh, Quit India resolution demanding the immediate transfer of power to Indians and quit India. On 8th August 1942, in Bombay, the All India Congress Committee endorsed the resolution, resolution which called for the non-violent mass struggle on the widest possible scale throughout the country. It was on this occasion that Gandhiji delivered the famous Do or Die speech. The call for quit India almost brought the state missionary to him standstill in, a, in large parts of the country as people voluntarily threw themselves into the thick of the movement. People observed hattles and demonstrations and processions were accompanied by national songs and slogans. The movement was truly a mass movement which brought into its admit thousands of ordinary people namely students, workers, and peasants. It also saw the active participation of leaders, namely Jai Prakash Narayan, Aruna Asaf Ali, 
and Ram Manohar Lohia and many women such as Mathangini Hazra in Bengal, Kankatala Barua in Assam and Ramadevi in Odisha, the British responded with much force yet it took more than a year to suppress the movement. Write in brief. 1. Explain. A. Why growth of nationalism in the colonies, colonies, uh, colonies is linked to an anti-colonial movement? B. How the First World War helped in the growth of the national movement in India? Why Indians were outrated by the Rowlett, Rowlett Act? The Gandhiji decided to withdraw the non-cooperation movement. Question number 2. What is meant by the idea of Satyagraha? Question number 3. Write a newspaper report on A. The Jallianwal Bhag Massacre B. The Simon Commission Question number 4. Compare the images of Bhartha Mata in this chapter with the image of Germania in chapter 1. Discuss. Question number 1. List all the different social groups which joined the non-cooperation movement of 1921. Then choose any three and write about their hopes and struggles to show why they joined the movement. Question number 2. Discuss the salt march to make clear why it was an effective symbol of resistance against colonialism. Question number 3. Imagine you are the woman participating in the civil disobedience movement. Explain what the experience meant to you life. To your life. Question number 4. Why did political leaders differ sharply over the questions of separate um, electorates project? Find out about the anti-colonial movement in Indochina. Compare and contrast India's national movement with the, with the ways in which Indochina became independent. Thank you.